first time in 23 years, I'm going back to Great Britain. In this series of videos, I'll be exploring my homelands of England, Scotland, and making a very brief visit in Wales, all done on a shoestring budget, since cost was the only factor really holding me back in the past. In this part one of my journey, I'll be leaving behind Toronto and traveling in a roundabout sort of way to London. So using Skyscanner, I searched for flexible dates to try and get the cheapest possible flight, fully with the intention of flying direct from Toronto to London. But a one-way flight was gonna cost me over $700. Damn, it'll need to be plan B. So the new plan is I'm going to fly Toronto to Calgary and then to London, sending back only $444.90. Sometimes my genius is, it's almost frightening. Good news is, I managed to clear security and get to the gate within half an hour. Bad news is, no, about two and a half hours until I'm supposed to be on the plane. Are a little bit cramped, but it's alright. This is the domestic one. Hey, it does have power boarding. That's good. I may have to get the cable out. Just when you're loading the plane, first of two, it's four hours, 20 minutes in the wrong direction. about half an hour to film out of the terminal. I mean, it says it is this way, but it doesn't give an estimate of how far or how long it might take to get there, so it could be half an hour, it could be, <laughs> it could be right around the corner. It's a big airport though. The second flight had more legroom, but unfortunately I was stuck in the middle seat for the entire trip without a neck pillow. The 7 hours and 58 minutes at least is in the right direction this time. That flight was a nightmare. I didn't sleep a wink. And after making the long arduous journey, we welcome back to Great Britain. But no time for that, I have important jobs to do. First of all, I have to get myself a SIM card so I can start connecting to the internet again. Then after baggage claim, I had to put my little backpack into my big backpack. And then finally, I had to get myself an Oyster card. I had to get an Oyster card to travel around London anyway, but hear me out. When you get to Heathrow Airport, there are multiple options to get yourself into the city. You can take a bus, you can take a taxi, you can take a shuttle bus, you can rent a car, you can take a train, or my personal favorite, you can take the underground. And the line that I'm on just so happens to be going straight to Russell Square, which is where I'm heading for my hostel anyway. For extra convenience, the subway station is inside the airport. Not only is it usually faster to take the underground, it's also one of the most cheapest options available. Hello folks, hope you're enjoying the video. It's Sam from the future here, coming at you from Hasur in India. While you guys are watching my UK videos, I'm currently in India filming my India vlog. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see those. I just had to butt in for a second just to bring you a couple of bits of information. So some of the music you're gonna be hearing throughout these vlogs, including the theme tunes, are all being produced by my cousin Callum, who you will see in a later episode. I couldn't let it go by without having a shout out to him and his amazing friends who have helped create some of the music for this, which is completely unique. He's made them just for me, just for this series, so Callum, you're friggin' awesome, buddy. Thank you. I had to give you this shout out because you friggin' deserve it. Anyway, with that part over, back to the video. Here we go. Oh, wicked. 
It's not huge, but um, I wasn't really expecting it to be huge. So, hey, I got top bunk as well. Cool. I've got mattress protectors and stuff on, so the bed bugs won't be an issue. I know that was quite a thing. Oh, it opens it. Ah. <laughs> this is what I'm working with with the bunk. It's got little USB port chargers, also a little light light, which is sort of shielded from everyone else. It doesn't disturb them properly not too much. It's storage locker at the bottom. Bottom bunks. And then it's got the top bunks. Also got a little wash hand basin in there. For what it is, right? I mean, there's a lot of negative reviews about the place online saying that it's like like prison cells and stuff like that, but you're paying 20 bucks to get a place in the middle of London. For that amount of money, what do you expect? Hilton? So after a much needed shower and a much needed rest, I was still feeling tired, but I didn't want to lose the time that I had, so I headed out to King's Cross and St Pancras Station to head up to Camden Town. Camden Market is just an amazing sight in itself. If you have the time in London, go and check it out. I could have spent all week here, I could have spent all month here, and probably not seen it all. But I was on a mission. There was one thing and one thing only that I had to go and sample, and that was the Yorkshire Burrito. Now the Yorkshire Burrito is one large Yorkshire pudding. They then add stuffing, roast potatoes, which they pop so they don't go off like little nuclear bombs in your mouth. And then your choice of either roast beef, roast chicken, or cauliflower cheese. It's then topped off with a nice serving of gravy, and then wrapped up like a burrito. Like, over your line is like three or four people long. Pick up one. So around the back and out the side. It's clearly very, very popular. Seems like a great idea at the time. This is the primary reason I came all the way to Camden Market. That is really good. Yes, in hindsight, I probably should have savoured a little bit more, but I was starving. So I stood there like a pig and devoured the entire thing. All of these stalls have like the foods and stuff across the front of them. So you can kind of see what you're in for before you buy it. But that's it. The only one that still has a queue is Yorkshire Burrito. These little pods are a really cool idea. Must be nice and kind of quiet in there, a good seat, and you can have to try some of the street foods and stuff. There's just, there's just, there's just too much stuff. Much too much. <laughs> Churros and donuts and Mexican grill and stuff. You could spend a week here and probably not see it all. Despite the downpour and stuff, it's still super, super busy. Howdy all, me again. Just to let you know, I did actually find out why it was so busy in Camden Market and in the city in general. Turns out it was November the 5th. Remember, remember the 5th of November and I genuinely forgot. If you don't know, November 5th is actually the biggest fireworks night in all of the UK. I could have potentially seen one of the most amazing fireworks displays in years had I been out of bed for it. That, for now, I think is the biggest regret of my trip so far. At this point in my journey, I am super exhausted, but I don't know if I'm going to get time to come back to Camden Market tomorrow, so I couldn't help but on my way back to the subway station just have a look around. There's so much stuff to see, there's so much stuff to do, it's absolutely incredible. If you have time, please go and check it out, I really enjoyed myself here. And after winding my way through the market, eventually I found the subway station. And I even got to encounter a genuine London loony. I think I might call it quits for the day. Next video is going to be the full London vlog. I'm going to go around and do all the locations. Well, not all the locations, obviously, but you know what I mean. I'm going to go around. Oh, I'm too tired to think right now. Just comment, share, subscribe, the whole shebang. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you click away, here's a quick preview of episode two. Hope you enjoy.